On the night before the Tiravad Hirai festival, Iyarapar and Nayaki, who had brought up virtue, made a big noise in the wide terraced streets of Thiruvayarat. On that day, Swami and Amon were decorated and made to sit in a Kailasa vehicle made of silver to resemble Kailayangari covered with silver. Elephants, camels, and huge bulls led the procession. The pairs mounted on them, the Murasas and the eight directions resounded. Behind them went row after row those carrying various kinds of religious relics. The players of various instruments went in groups. Dancers stopped and danced and left. Lord Nandi, Shandikeshavara, Vinayaka, and Vali Devayana Same Dara Lord Muruga sat in separate planes. Finally, Parvati and Parmswaran sat in the Kailasa vehicle and brought Seva. Further back, the Devara Koshtas were marching along with musical instruments such as Veena, Madhalam, Talam etc., singing Thiruvayaruth Thirupathagam sung by Appar, Sambandar, and Sundar. In front and behind, thousands of people were blocking the streets and going in a slow procession. According to the mood of the people, some were engaged in seeing elephants, camels, etc., some were listening to the hymns of instrumental groups, some were watching the dances of Deva Kanakiar, and most of them were ecstatic and praising the deity idols who had come to Thiruvolakam. As far as the eye could see, hundreds of lamps were shining in front and behind making the unusual deity procession a dream world scene. Kunta, Vanathi, and Pungazalai were watching this scene from the main floor of the Chola Palace. From the elephants carrying Murasu who arrived first, till the last party of Devara arrived, they watched with interest. They saw devotees in a state of ecstasy and lay people engrossed in various amusements. From Nandi Devar to Shiva Parvati, they also enjoyed darshan of the deities who roamed the streets. In the midst of such a crowd they saw two Chinese traders riding an elephant, and every now and then the elephant would descend from the top and disappear into the crowd, and then come back and mount the elephant. Aha! Are these two Chinese really traders? Or are they strangers from a foreign country to visit Wavya? A doubt arose in Kundave's heart. It is only natural that the news about the disputes and confusions that had occurred for a few days regarding the sovereignty of the Chola kingdom would have spread all over the world. In view of that, could not the hostile kings have sent these agents in the guise of Chinese traders? Kunta and Vanatha were talking about this and it came to Punghawali's ear. The woman said, Devi. They approached me at the gate of the temple tower and asked, Do I want to be Chinese? They asked. I told them, come to the Chola mansion, the princesses are going to come from Tanjore, they will probably buy. I have told you. So maybe they will come here. We can answer your doubts in person. She said. At that time, Iyarapa sitting in the Kailayangirai vehicle and Nayaki who cultivated virtue had come to the door of the Chola mansion. Swami was made to stop there and Deeparadhana etc. took place. Sembian Mathavi and his son, who accompanied the deity, entered the palace after the flight took off. Knowing that the princesses were in the palace, they arrived there. There was a brief discussion about the merits of the festival. Later, the goddess of Shiva, Kandaradathar, looked at her lovely son and said, Child! You have sung a hymn about the sight of the Supreme Lord in this Thiruvayar. Sing it once. Let's hear it. I was not satisfied enough to hear Devara Koshti Yar sing it. Said. The princesses and Pung Jalai agreed to the request. Then Madhuranthak Devar, the Santhanamudana, sang the hymn in his sweet voice. Mother Crescent Maiden, Malayan's daughter. Touching the water Sumanthati Pukyavarana Binkuanya Dunje, without a trace. When I reached. 5. I saw her coming with love in her arms. The one who saw it, did not turn around. I saw it without finding it. Beginning with this stanza, Madhurand Hakkar sang the following ten stanzas in a state of self-forgetfulness. The listeners had also forgotten themselves. They also saw all the scenes seen by the Supreme Lord that day. After the song was over, there was silence for a while. Then, Kuntave looked at the champion Mathavi and said, Mother! You have told me the story of Appar singing this patagam once before. Now tell me one more time. 
let them hear it too. She said. The great bratty champion Mathavi told the story on insistence by others. When Upper Swami Prayam was old and frail, he wanted to go to Kailangiri to visit the Lord. He travelled far north. He could not walk up and collapsed. Just then a great man appeared there and said, A pair. Where are you going in search of Kailat? Go to Tiravayat on the banks of Pani River. That is the Kailasam of the world and disappeared. Knowing that it was God's promise, Appar came back to Tiravayar. As he approached the place, his heart was filled with ecstasy. He saw many servants carrying flowers in their hands and kavari water in jugs going to pay homage to Iyarapan. They went singing the praises of God. Appar also went behind them. Then two elephants, a male and a female, came to Thiruvayar urban area. Those arms and grips gave the appearance of Shiva and Shakti to Appar. Thus Appar saw many animals and birds in male and female form before reaching the temple. Kulai came together with the chicken coop, the male peacock danced with the female peacock, in a nearby oasis the female quail was singing and making merry with the male quail, a monster went with its female race, bellowing with a thunderous voice, the stork and his companion flew away together, Bingley and his pack were chattering in the bows, the bull and the cow walked majestically. Thus all that appeared before Appar Swami as male and female became visible to his inner eye as Shiva and Shakti. He saw the whole world as Shakti and Shiva. He realized, this world is Kailasam, alone there is no other Kailasam. As he went up with such genuine emotion, he saw the five-year-old, the virtuous heroine getting up on the Kailasa vehicle and crawling down the road. All that he had seen and experienced that day, he blessed by singing in sweet Tamil one by one. At the end of each song, he said, Kandari Adana Kandan. He repeated in amazement. Everyone was mesmerized listening to this story told by the old emperor. After the story was over, the princess of Kajumbalar asked a question, Mother. Has Appar Swami raved so much about the love of the animal and bird species? Why did he not mention the human race only? She said. Bungazali there are no men and women in the human race who do not want to be reciprocated and truly love. That is why Appar does not mention the men and women of the human race. She said. That is not right, my daughter. If the Upper Swami had seen you and my son, he would have sung of the love of mankind. Said Champion Mathavi. Yes, yes. The other two ladies agreed. At this moment there was a commotion at the door of the mansion. A servant came in and said, Two Chinese silk merchants have arrived. They say they will leave after seeing the princesses. He said. The younger Brady was astonished and angry, and said, Who are they so preachy? Now tell them to go away. She said. Meanwhile Punguzali said, Devi. I had asked them to come. I must forgive you. She said. Then come and leave. Said I lay Aprati. After a while the two Chinese traders arrived there with two bundles.